Hi everyone, welcome. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be taking you through Bato Sierra. Um, for those who don't know it, it's basically a, a custom version of Linux, which is designed um, to you install it to a USB drive, a hard drive, SD card, whatever it might be, boot your machine from it or your device or handheld, and it basically turns it into a retro gaming console. All pre-configured with the, the front end, the emulators, etc., and, and pre-configured ROMs folders. You just drop your games in to the, the correct folder that matches your system. Um, uh, either re, re scan the list or, or restart, and it, there they are, the game's ready to go, and click and play. Uh, then you can just do a couple of optional things like download themes, uh, scrape artwork for the games, all that kind of stuff, which I'll, I'll, I'll show you, take you through. This is basically from start to finish, how you, where you start, get the image, put it onto a device, boot your machine, and then do the, you know, the basic configuration of Batasera, get you up and running, and then a couple of extra little bits, how to tweak it and, and, and customize it. So, yeah, away we go. Uh, this is the Batasera website, so batasera.org. Obviously, put all the links in the description. Um, at the time of recording this, uh, version 35 is the latest version, so if I can get, get Batasera here. So, like I say, it's available for loads and loads of different platforms. We're going to do, um, I guess, the, the, the main one for um, Intel based desktops, laptops. Um, or the Intel Nook, that kind of device, or even more modern Intel based Apple devices. So that's the, uh, the link there. There's a version for the Steam Deck as well. And if you scroll down the list here, you've got a whole bunch of handheld devices, retro gaming devices, which you can put this on. And they've all got their you know, direct link here to the, to the image. Um, obviously, the Raspberry Pi, the various versions, um, some other single board devices, uh, little, little mini devices. Um, other random ones like the Capcom um, Home Arcade device and controller. Um, and then right at the bottom of here, e even if you've got a very old PC that's kicking around, you know, got it stuck in the carriage or the loft or wherever, not use it for a while, it, it's worth digging it out because even these very old systems they've got here 15 plus, so it's a slightly different version for them that's, that's going to work on the older 32 bit architecture. And same for the Atom. E even these systems are going to play, you know, your basic your basic games, your basic Master System, NES, probably SNES and Mega Drive as well, that kind of stuff. Obviously depending on the spec of them, but yeah. So even if you've got a very old PC, you can turn it into a gaming, a retro gaming system really, really easy. So yeah, um, like I say, the, the process is pretty much the same no matter what device you're using. What we're going to do is download an image, put it onto either the device, an SD card, a USB stick, a USB attached hard drive or an internal hard drive whatever you want, whatever works best for you, or whatever your situation is, you're basically going to grab the image and, and burn it to it. So, direct link here to the image. Once you click on it, it should just download. I'm not going to do that because I've already got it, but yeah, you just click on click on Save As or however you'd normally download stuff, where you've got a download, download manager. So basically, once you grab the image, let me have a quick look here. Um, just drag that into view. So I have downloaded it already, like I say, it's in my temp folder here, uh, sorry, I lie, it's in my downloads folder. Uh, so there, so basically you're going to get this um, compressed image format. Um, so I've got 7-zip installed, which is why it's got that icon. So if you open it in your favourite favorite app for extracting, I would really recommend 7-zip, um, it works really well. Um, you see here you've got the image file, so you would just literally take this and drag it out into the uh, into the folder. This will go through and extract it. And the next thing we're going to do is actually then take this image uh, and write it to the device. Um, so it's, it's worth saying that if you're running Batasera, it's basically, it doesn't take over your, your whole system, obviously depending on how you use it, you, you could have a dedicated retro gaming device that you want to put it on, but if you've only got one PC um, that you use day to day, you know, in Windows or, or Linux or whatever for your day to day things, you can put a Tessera onto a USB attached device and just temporarily boot off it and play. And when you've finished, shut down, unplug it, and then boot your machine back up normally into Windows. Or if you do have a second PC or a, a system or Raspberry Pi, whatever it might be, that you're dedicating to, uh, to, to emulation and to retro gaming, then yeah, you can yeah, write it to. Um, the main storage on that device and just have it boot off it every single time but I'll show you show you both uh, both options so anyway once this is downloaded and once you've extracted it 
you have the image file. The next thing is to to um, burn it or copy it to our I've chosen I've chosen device. So to do that, we've got this thing called Etcher, which is probably I mean, most people probably have heard of it if you've done any kind of flashing or, or writing images before. It's kind of like the go-to one at the moment. Um, so just click download, and you've got a couple of different. Uh, different um, options. I tend to go for the portal version. Basically that just means that it's all contained in a single folder or file. It's not going to install to your system. It's just going to stick it into one folder so you know it's not going to spread files here, there and everywhere. So that's one. That's the version I like to get. So we'll click download. Again, I do already have this but I'm going to do it anyway. I'll stick it in that, stick it in that downloads folder as well. It's not particularly big. So just while that's downloading, if you go back to the here, they, uh, back to Batisera website, they do have their own guide here, which I'll see. Feel, feel free to follow. Um, but you can say, so just so you see, it, it recommends Etcher as well. So um, but there's a bit more detail in here, you know, screenshots on, on how to do it, and then um, things you want to resize the disk. And again, when you come to booting your device up, if you are um, booting from USB, if you want to use it from a USB device and just temporarily play some gaming. Um, there's sort of notes around here about entering the, the, uh, the temporary boot option menu. Because normally with a PC, it'll boot off your internal hard drive, your first internal hard drive, uh, depending on you know, if you've got more than one. Um, but if you want to temporarily boot off a USB drive, um, so some systems you put it in, it will, if it finds USB, it will boot off it, that's what you find. If not, you may need to press either F10, F11, F12, to bring up uh, what they call a temporary boot, uh, uh, boot menu. Or, uh, boot list, and that's basically that you know one-time boot, um, different from the default. So yeah, you hit, hit the button, you get a menu like similar to what you got on screen here, <clears throat> and you should find in that list your your USB device or SD card, whatever it is that you put the image onto, and you basically select it, hit enter, and for that boot, it'll boot off the USB drive, and then it takes you through the rest rest of the stuff. And then there's, there's a whole bunch of um, troubleshooting here, which you may or may not need. Hopefully not. Um, about you know what if you flash into a device and it fails, what if you if it fails to boot for whatever reason? There's a couple of options here about um, uh, if he, um, UEFI, you can boot uh, uh, firmware settings that you might need to turn on off and secure boot and leg legacy boot, all that kind of stuff. But hopefully you won't need. And here's how to do it in a Mac if you want to uh, boot off a different device in a, on a Mac device. And yeah, help, help, loads of help in here. But like I say, hopefully you won't need this. But it's there it's there if you do so anyway back to our image we downloaded and back to to etcher so see we've got the portable version here if i just run this he says it's coming <clears throat> right so here we go so very basic interface so Flash from file. There's different ones where you, you can basically yeah, clone the existing device, flash from a URL, and it will go off and download the file for you, all that kind of stuff. But we want the top option, flash from file. So I downloaded the image uh, into downloads, did I? Yeah, so obviously you don't want the compressed version, you want the one you uncompressed, the image file, IMG. Hit OK on that. It, so it's loaded it now, the Batasera version 35, and then dates after it. Now select target. It will show. Also, be careful at this point if you're if you're booting from. Also, you're in Windows, and presumably you don't want to. Or you, you probably never want to overwrite your your C drive, your your system drive. So it does flag up that this is your system drive. Be careful. Don't pick this one. So we obviously we don't want to. So I've put in um, this 16 gig USB 3 stick. That I'm going to use just for this. So I just tick that box. And there's a couple of other drives I've got in my system, which it's just warning that you know these are quite big. You know, it's quite clever if these are large drives, you should, this probably isn't the one you want to pick. <laughs> um, but anyway, make sure you pick the right one, that's, that's vital. So I've got it selected there, and then click flash. Um, that's pretty much it. It pops up with this little um, uh, elevation prompt. Just click yes to that, and it'll start now. There's a little bit of, I guess, advertising or you know, sort of promotion type on the right hand side here saying, other stuff you can do with a Raspberry Pi, which is, you know, you might find useful. Um, so you see now it's flashing away. So it's, it's nearly seven gig the image. So it will take a few minutes. So what I'll probably do 
I mean, like I say, it's quite quite quick. What I'll probably do is just let this run, and I'll pause the video and come back when this is either very nearly done or done. So I'll be back in well instantly. Okay, <clears throat> there we go. Magic skip to the end. Ninety-eight percent. Ninety-nine. And now it's going to validate. <laughs> so it does the double double check if it's written the, the image correctly. Just does a, a quick compare. This bit is a bit quicker. It's still going to take a little while. So what I'll do rather than doing it again, I'll just click skip. I'm going to presume it's okay. So anyway, yeah, there we go. Once it's finished, um, flash complete. You can either flash another or uh, we'll just close and carry on. So now we're ready to take the, uh, the USB stick we've just uh, just imaged so just off screen here I'll, I'll go in and um, find the USB icon on the system tray right click and eject get that, that drive and before I do that you just have a look you can't see much within Windows itself if you look at here um, I'm not sure it's showing up initially um, just for completeness I will I'll eject it and put it back in and then you'll be able to see exactly how much you can't see. <laughs> so it's basically because you've got a, a boot partition, a rather small boot partition at the beginning of the drive. Um, let's see, where yeah, basically. So there's not much content here. There's the, the stuff it needs to boot off basically. Um, and then once it um, once it has the first boot, it expands and creates partitions and sorts itself out. Um, and then basically boots up. So it's all, 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 all automatic and it's designed to then use the full size of your device. So I've got a 16 gig um, USB drive here. So what it do on first boot is resize and use up for all, all the 16 gig. If you've got a bigger drive, it'll do the same. You know, it could be 500 gig hard drive, a one terabyte hard drive. It'll basically expand to use the whole space or make all the space available. So you've got plenty of room for games. Um, but having said that, once once it's done all that and you've you've got a, a better image on, on your device, if you do plug it into a Windows device, you'll see this boot partition again, but you won't see the actual main partition which holds all the ROMs. That's basically because it's a, a Linux format um, partition that Windows can't read, but well, can't read natively. There are utilities you can get if you want to, um, but you don't don't need to. Um, there's much easier, better ways to get your ROMs and stuff onto it, um, which we'll we'll go through once we've got up and running. So yeah, that's basically the device there. So, like I say, you unplug it, you put it into your device, uh, and then boot up. Um, so they depend depend on whether you're booting off USB or whether you're actually imaging a hard drive to go in a separate machine. Um, you can do that. You can basically take it, plug it in, away you go, boot up. If it's a USB device, like I said on before on their on their guide, you may need to hit um, F9, 10, 11, or 12, something like that, to go into a to a boot menu, pick USB device, and then boot. Um, and you're all good. So, like I say, yeah, you, you could, um, as I mentioned just then, you you could image a hard drive that you've got attached to this this PC uh, and put it into another PC that you're going to use for, for gaming. Um, obviously, that, that's fine. You can do it that way. But if you don't want, you don't fancy, you know, take physically taking the hard drive out of that device, plugging it into your Windows machine, imaging it, unplugging it, putting it back in the device. There's a much easier way to do that, which I'll show as well. You can just use a USB drive temporarily. So what, basically what I've just done there, image it to a, a USB drive, plug that USB drive into your what's going to be your retro gaming machine, boot it up normally, and bring, bring Brassier up, uh, and then there's an option within the menu to install to a new hard drive or to a new device, and then you can basically use that to write to the hard drive that's in that device. And then once you've done that, you no longer need the USB drive, you unplug that, and it'll then boot off the internal hard drive. Um, so yeah, there's different options you've got, depending on what, what suits your needs. And like I say, whether you've got a single PC, you're just looking to boot off temporarily from USB, or you, you may even want to make a USB stick that you can take with you and travel. So I don't know, you know, depend on you know, whether you go and see your friends or you're traveling with work and you've got a PC with you, access to a PC, you can have everything on a USB drive. Obviously, it depends how big it is, how many games you can fit on it. So all you really need is a USB drive, access to a computer, and, and a controller. Be it, you know, a USB controller or a, a Bluetooth controller, when I say controller, I mean a gamepad, um, to play the game. So yeah, you could you know, basically do that, take it around your mate's house and 
have a bit of fun there. So anyway, rather than rambling on, let's um, let's see what happens when you first boot, boot the system up. So what, I'm actually going to do it inside a, a virtual machine on, on here, running inside um, Oracle VirtualBox. So you just get to see it. Rather than trying to do it on a physical machine, it's easier for me just to record it in here. So I basically created a, a generic virtual machine here with a couple of gig of RAM um, and then I've attached um, what I did separately to this is just put that battery image onto a virtual hard drive rather than putting, so rather than imaging it onto a onto a USB stick like we just did, which is probably what you're doing. I've just imaged it onto a virtual hard drive that goes into this virtual machine. But kind of ignore that. That's this is just the purposes of recording it. So what I'll do is I'll start this up and you'll see what it what it'll look like. Let's move this out away. So you'll see, you'll see kind of roughly what it looks like when you uh, when you boot it up yourself. So here's the virtual machine starting up, and very quickly you'll see kind of a text box as it does the uh, the uh, resizing that I mentioned. So here's the virtual machine starting up. Like I say, this is this will be the same as as you pop in your uh, your drive in. It does play some music there, but I've obviously got that muted, so you, you don't hear it. And then I think what you probably didn't see is right at the beginning there's like a, a very for a brief second it um, probably take longer on, on depending on the size of your drive but kind of a I guess a text DOS based screen which just shows the uh, where it expand expands the, uh, the partition to the full size of your device that'll flash out briefly and then it'll boot up like this so this is it up and running like I say it's kind of pre-configured out the box ready to go there's a couple of kind of I guess public domain or open source games that are on here, like kind of homebrew type games that are obviously free, they, they can package them. So there's a couple of games on here to get, get you going if you want to have a look. Yeah, so Space Twins. Yeah. Martels. So yeah, there's a couple of games to get you going, but also you want to you want to probably add your own games. So right, so first boot, <clears throat> we're, we're good to go. So if we're just going to use it off the USB, or if we, this is on, a, so this could be any device now, Obviously, we're doing it on a, on a Windows a X64 type device, but this could be any device. This could be your Raspberry Pi or anything. The interface or the once you're in battery series is pretty much the same. So, first thing I, I tend to do is, obviously, before setting any controllers, etc., you can use a use a keyboard um, to to move around with the, the arrow keys. Hit the spacebar to bring up the menu. And again, use arrow keys. Hit enter to select something. Escape to to come out. Um, if you do want to set up your your controllers. You hit the space bar to bring up the main menu. And you've got a control and Bluetooth settings here. I don't have Bluetooth on, on this machine, but you can go in here, say, pair a Bluetooth device, hit, hit enter here, and then once you've done that, put your gamepad into pairing mode, um, and it'll basically detect it and auto auto connect it up. And then from that point, you've got to use your gamepad to scroll through the menus. You'll press basically green or the A button, wherever it might be, to select, and press the red button or the B button to go back or come out of a menu, same as I'm doing here, pressing escape. So, so yeah, this is the, uh, you don't really need to change much else in here. Um, there's some options here to, to show activity, i.e. when you're, if you've got a Bluetooth gamepad, whether it, whether it connects or disconnects, uh, and also the, the battery level, again, if it's a uh, um, rechargeable, or, or I guess if it's, it's standard, standard batteries, it'll show the, the power level that you've got left in the batteries, which is quite handy. And also you've got the option to, uh, to figure a device disconnect something and there's controller mapping if you need to change the mapping of the keys hopefully I think most people wouldn't like I say it's all kind of plug and play and, and you know fit, follows a standard standard um, button mapping but you know if you want to change it this is where you change it so like I say yeah first thing to do is sort out the controller um, I'm just going to carry on using the keyboard it's easier so first thing to do come down to system settings 
and then you've got things like the uh, language in the region. I think this defaults to US, uh, and it may or may not pick up the right time zone. But just just change it, hit enter, and you've got a list of all the different time zones, European ones. And I think above this is yeah, kind of generic ones. But anyway, pick pick the right time zone, pick the right language. You've got a whole bunch in here. Like I, said, I think US is the default. Um, so yeah, pick that and then hit escape when you're done. Um, if, if you want to, if you want to scrape artwork, download any extra themes, check for updates, all that kind of stuff, you need to make sure your network's connected. So if you've got a hardwired um, or you know, um, cabled connection, you should be good. It should be connected straight away. Um, the indicator is the uh, is the indicator top right here to show you've got um, a network connection. If your device has got Wi-Fi. Obviously, you come in here, you hit enter to turn this on. Um, I, so I don't have Wi-Fi on here, but if you do, hit enter, turn it on, and you'll then get two boxes that say enter the, the Wi-Fi SSID and the password to connect to. So, quite simple. And also, you can change the host name in here as well. So, the, the, the name that appears on, on your home network, if you if you want to, or maybe you've got more than one Batasura running. Um, you can, you know, Batasura 1, Batasura 2, or something a bit more descriptive. Um, you can do that here as well. So yeah, make sure the network's connected, um, otherwise you won't get very far. <laughs> um, so, obviously we downloaded the latest image, so we should be good to go, but you can go to update and, and uh, check for updates here automatically. I think it does it, it definitely does it at the startup, but it does per periodically through that, I'm not sure, but it will check for, for updates and prompt you if there's a, a new version released. Um, if you do want to um, stable is the default, kind of like so when it's generally released, the next version. Obviously, this is 35, 36 will be out at some point. Um, but I believe 36 is in beta testing at the moment. So, if you want to um, check for updates again, beta, you change this to beta. So, if we go stable and say start update, it will do a check. No update is available, we've got the, got the right version. If my network or internet connection wasn't working, you'd have an error here about not going to connect. Um, so, if I change this temporarily just to beta, Say update. It's kind of saying you're on version 35. There is a, you see here, 36 dev, and then uh, obviously the, the version and, and date of that uh, particular build. Um, so if you want to try out the new build, you can. But obviously, you'll see the caveat that it's a beta, there might be bugs and issues and things not working. So I'll just say no for now and put that back to stable. So anyway, um, that's that piece. Um, I'll come back out for a second. So this is kind of the basic interface. Yeah, yeah. It's perfectly, perfectly nice. <laughs> it works, works really well. But there are a whole bunch of themes you can put on to change the look and feel. So I would recommend that. So hit space again, and we come down to user interface settings. And here we've got the theme set. Hit enter here. Like I say, you've got the, the one, only the one at the moment, which is this uh, this carbon theme. But if we go back to where we were a second ago, and the updates and downloads. Um, so to go through each of these, so the content downloader, um, this is where you can download some additional, I guess, more homebrew um, and free games for each system. Um, there's things about um, adding on uh, retro achievements. There's some um, bezels. So bezels are the, the, the basically the borders that appear either side or around the screen when you're playing. Sometimes normally they tend to make it look like a, a TV screen or a themed to the console you're running. There's options in here to download bezels. There are lots of different systems. Again, some, some games for the 364. And another free game for Dreamcast. But there's a whole bunch of stuff you can download if you want. So get some more free games and a few bits and pieces. I, I don't really tend to use this, but you can do some music in here, some more background music. There is, when Batasira plays, there is some background music. If you can, I've muted it. But if you want to do that, you go into the uh, sound menu, you can change the volume of everything. Um, turn front end music on, I've turned it off for the moment so it doesn't, doesn't actually play. Um, and I believe somewhere you, you can pick you can pick the song titles, well. I think it might just um, pick them automatically. So, and then you can say only play system specific music folder, so you can um, have music that matches your system. But anyway, we won't worry about that at the moment. So go back, go back to where I was, the updates. Uh, themes is what 
I want to talk about. Um, bezels is another piece to talk about first. Um, so the bezel project is a kind of a, a separate standalone project, which is basically aiming to create as many uh, bezels as possible. So themed bezels for each game. So when you load up a game, say you load up Donkey Kong, you have the bezel on the outside of the screen, which matches Donkey Kong. Um, so yeah, it just makes it look just I don't know, a much better experience. So you basically got the packs here from the from the bezel project online. You can go through and just click on each one. You can say download. So at the moment, it's only showing the systems that I've got. So obviously, these are the thick systems that come with Battlefield. They've got, like I say, got those couple of freeware open source games that you can download the uh, the bezels for all of these. Um, uh, and as you add more systems, you'll have more available in here. Uh, and then the one I was going to show originally is Steam's. So like you see, see here they've got little little uh, screenshots or thumbnail there of what the theme looks like. You can scroll through the list. There's quite a few on here, Some really nice ones. So I tend to go for near the top of the list. Obviously, I'll look through. There's there's loads. Um, I quite like uh, the Art Flicks. So you just hit enter on it. Hit enter again to install. Add to the download queue. See the top right. It's going to download. Tell you how much it's done. Doesn't tell you how big it is. But I haven't, you know, I don't think I found a, somewhere that shows you how big it is. But this is it takes a few minutes to download. I'll let that go for a minute. What you can actually do is, is, is while it's downloading, just come out. It, it's, it's still downloads in the background, so that's fine. So, so to get 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 games on, um, like I say, it's, it's easier probably to do it over your home network. Um, I think you probably can do it by USB as well. If you've got a USB drive full of ROMs that you want to stick into a machine and copy onto the into the internal hard drive or to the USB stick, you can do that as well. Um, so I guess let's do the network first. So like I say, make sure network's connected, which like we've already done. So we get the IP address, 192.168.1.52 is the IP of here, so on our Windows machine we're now going to do just browse for this, so double backslash 192.168.1.52 and just drag that down to view. So now like you see we've got a, a Windows file share, which is basically a the folder or the the, uh, the share from the Batasura box. So double click in here, you've got a whole bunch of stuff. Um, so two ones to really worry about are, are the BIOS. Uh, so for a lot of the a lot of the consoles and systems to run, they need a copy of the BIOS file from the particular console. Again, this is something, there's some in, that, you can, that they can provide, they're provided in here, but the majority, because of copyright um, and legality reasons, they can't supply them, but um, I found a, a good a good source of a, a BIOS pack, which basically has a whole pack of all the BIOSes you could possibly ever need for Batasera. Um, you basically get that, download it, and copy it into this folder. I'll leave a link in the description. Um, can't say more than that. <laughs> you understand why? Um, so yeah, grab that, and you should be good to go. Just copy it all into this folder here, uh, and then go back to the share level, and you've got the ROMs folder. And this is what I'm saying. Is, oh, sorry, what I said before is there's a whole bunch of uh, folders in here for all the different systems that you could possibly add to Batasura. 170 different folders, 170 different systems you can add in. Um, and they're, all, they're all fairly obvious, if not you can check the Batasura website. But, uh, you know, the Panasonic, 3D, Panasonic 3DO, um, Nintendo 3DS, um, Amiga, Atari, a whole different bunch. So basically, if you're going to put some games in, you'll take them and you copy into the right folder. So what I'll do, I'll do that quickly. Um, so let's say you do Mega Drive. So I go to games on my system. Um, I have a best of collection here. Uh, let's go Mega Drive. So a bunch of games in here. Um, these are the artworks uh, folders, which obviously I've, I've already scraped before and taken a copy of, but we won't do those for now because um, we'll do the scraping. So I'll select everything in here. There's a game list as well, which it, it, this is where it, what it generates when it adds games. Um, so I don't, I don't want to take that. I want to do everything from scratch. So, so basically, yeah, here's a, a hundred, hundred odd games. So I'll 
Control C, copy that, or you can select everything and right click copy. Uh, and then go back to where you were. So into the ROMs folder and in here should be a Mega Drive folder. Okay, there we go, there's an empty game system here. This is the free game that you can already see within the, within the menu. Uh, there's an info file here. And mo you know, most of the shared ROMs folders do have an info. And it basically, if I just move that into view, it basically tells you, okay, here's, a, here's the uh, extensions I accept. Um, there's a brilliant wiki, this is a bachelor wiki that tells you all about the Mega Drive, um, how to add games, basically you know, what format they're in, any kind of bar fight might need, all that kind of stuff you can find in this link. Um, hopefully you won't need it, but like I say, it's, it's in the info file and a lot of these ROM folders have those anyway to help you out. So right, just now I'm going to right click and paste. So Mega Drive games aren't particularly big. So let's copy those in. So move it out of the way, go back to our machine here, just hit escape. And so if we go across to Mega Drive now, you'll see there's one game. At the bottom here you've got one game. Let's go into it to show that single game. And then to get it to rescan you can either just hit spacebar, go down to the bottom, be quick and do a restart. Or what we should be able to do is go to game settings and say update game list. You really want to do this? Yep. And there you go, we've now got 102 games. And here they are. Obviously at the moment there's no artwork, but what we'll do, we'll show you next how to do that, how to get all that artwork. So that's that system added. Like I say, you can add multiple systems in one go, just copy everything in and update the game list and and away you go. So at this point now we're ready to go. We can go and we can find a Mega Drive game and play it. And that could be you done. Let's see how well this works in a in the virtual machine. It might run okay, might not. That's there you go, yeah. That plays okay. I haven't got the controller set up, so just use a keyboard. And again I have got the uh, audio muted so yeah, you have to trust me, it is working. Just skip past the screens just so you can see the gameplay. So there we go. I have no idea what the jump key is. Oh, there we go. And then just hit escape to cancel out. And there we go, so that's that you're up and running now. That, you know, so what I've literally done is I've just set up the network even though at this point we've not actually, you know we only used that to add the ROMs on, put the ROMs in and away we go. But obviously taking it to the next level, we want to put some nice artwork artwork in here to make it look make it look all nice. So what we can do, like I say, sorry, adding going back to the adding the ROMs, I did it via the network. The other other thing you can do is like I say, if you've got them on USB drive, you can you can plug it into this device and copy them across. And what you'll find is when you're in the main menu, and um, depending on what system you've got, you might have to plug a keyboard in, but if you hit the F1 key it kind of drops you into this, this is Fly Explorer. So you'll see here, if you plug a USB drive, it will pop in the list here, and it'll be a case of just browsing your USB drive, finding your ROMs, um, right click copying, then going back to the ROMs link here. So I get the mouse to work, it's on the virtual machine. There you go. Oh, I'm not sure it's going to work very well. But anyway, you use the mouse to click through here, click on ROMs, right click paste and it will copy it from USB drive to the other drive so you don't need to do the home network method I just find that easier because I've got batteries here running on a separate, separate machine in a different room I could do that but yeah like I say if you've got a single machine just yeah plug it in and use this this interface here to uh, to copy across so just got to try and get out of here now with the mouse working properly the keyboard. Let's go down to, to close window and then you're back into the main system. So that, that's kind of two, two main ways of getting your, system, your games on. So now, next step, do some artwork, artwork scraping. So again, let's go into the menu and let's go down to scraper. Um, if we hit enter here, there's a couple of different scrapers you can use. Um, I recommend screen scraper, it works really well. Um, Obviously, it's up to you which ones you uh, you pick. So we we'll go down to settings, 
um, image source so you can change all this around of, of the main image source is kind of the image it shows in the in the list and it's also used for some for backgrounds in some from the themes as well so but I tend to leave it as a default so so the image source is screenshot the box source if you go into here you have so this is obviously the, the front box of the of the game either a 2d flat box or 3d box I tend to use 2d box art because you get better matching not not all games have 3d box art made for them so I'll stick to two and then the logo source so when browsing through um, the list of games you can have a, a logo and that's either a transparent logo so you have a logo a bit like the mega drive one that we've got that we've got here it's like a transparent cutout version if you like you have that for each game or marquee is more of a rectangular box almost like if you think of an arcade machine you've got the marquee at the top with the name of the game with some some graphics it's a bit, a bit more of a, a square logo i guess if you like so i tend to use wheel i think that that works quite well i like that one so but obviously you, you can play with these and see what which ones you prefer so i'll stick with the wheel um and then there's the whole bunch of extra stuff so community scraping i leave on so as you browse through the games they'll have a rating that other people have rated the games so you can see which ones are the most popular etc um video i tend to turn on could just obviously it takes up more disk space the more artwork you scrape so just be aware if you've got quite a small usb drive and you want just you know a few games and you don't want to you haven't got much space maybe turn video off or you know don't even have to scrape artwork at all if you want to but i would recommend it um so yeah you can play with these and fan art again is sort of background artwork you can download bezels through here but i'd probably say stick to the bezel project if you want to do bezels um there's the back side of the box <laughs> um obviously normally in this theme you won't see it but some themes would use that as well um there's a map and a manual for the game which you can use and then for screen scraping you need to put in a username and password which is free you go to the screen scraper website at, mm, is again I'll put all the links in the description but it's uh, yeah, screenscraper.fr then yeah some of the stuff is in, uh, in French there's my username and login um, but yeah come over here create a free account and even with a free account you get something like 50,000 scrapes or 50,000 um, connections per day so that should be more than anyone but you know if you do have a huge collection that you're trying to scrape you might have to do it over a, a couple of days um, but yeah like I say just register a free account really recommend that works really well um, so I'll just put in my details here to blur out and then go across to the tick now I can go back now I can now you can tell it which games to scrape so you can say scrape all my games no matter whether they've already been scraped or not you might want to refresh the artwork or um, only scrape games that are missing any media so some games might have say the box art but might not have the fan art so this will scrape them and then this one will only scrape games that are missing all media. So I'm just going to scrape all because you know, there's not many on there. You can say ignore ones that you scraped recently. So if I scraped in the last 15 days, don't bother doing it again. Again, this is helpful if you've got a huge collection. But we're starting off, so I say no. And then obviously you can go in, you can pick which systems that you want to you want to scrape. So if you go in here, you can say okay, select none. And then I want to go. I want to do that one and that one maybe that one but again we're quite small here so i'll say select all get back when you're ready you can hit scrape now oh my login details are wrong let me just go and fix that i thought i knew them let's just go and check that okay
quick typo. There we go. Right, so game's missing any media. Don't need to Don't ignore any. And do all systems. Right, scrape now. There we go. So you can see in the top right corner, as soon as when we download a theme, you get it kind of happens in the background. And so I'll have that going away now. It's, it's not going to take too long. So it looks like it happens in the background, so you can just, you can happily carry on. Um, while that's doing that, I'll just show a couple other other bits and pieces. Um, so where should we go? So obviously sound settings I think I showed earlier where you can change the volume, etc. You notice at the top of the menu you do have Kodi, the Kodi Media Player built in. So I think the idea is if you've got this on a dedicated PC sitting somewhere, you can use it as, as a media center as well. And there is an option somewhere to, to launch Kodi at boot. So you can, if you want to, have it start straight into Kodi and then drop out the battlefield to play games if you want to and use it as a, as a media center. So I won't bother going into Kodi at the moment because that's like a completely separate thing. But it's basically, for those that don't know it, it's basically like a, a media player so you can play your, your, your videos, music, whole bunch of add-ons to stream stream bits and pieces, you know, media files. Um, yeah, so it's basically a, a very popular media player. Um, so under game settings, like I say, we had the ga update games list we used before. Um, there's a whole bunch of options here about you can change the aspect ratio, um, um, rendering and shaders is things like um, so you want to like upscale games and improve the graphics and apply shaders and shaders do things like make the screen look like an old CRT add scan lines you know, give that retro feel decorations is the same thing as bezels really it's what you know, appears on screen um, there's a whole bunch of options in here about loading and saving states and so a whole bunch of kind of like advanced um, Settings. Uh, the missing BIOS check is a handy one. So this will go through and check which bar files are missing. See, we've got a lot, <laughs> a lot of that missing. Obviously, you saw there when we played Mega Drive that doesn't need a BIOS file, so that plays fine. So that, you know, is all the Amiga BIOS files that you, you would need. And like I say, in in the link of the description is a link that's got a pack that's got all these files in it. You can see all the numbers there. It's quite quite a lot. So we'll. Uh, Let's come out of there for now. And there's an option if you want to yeah, check for bar file before running the game. So it will actually check and, and tell you that you're missing a bar file. It's handy. Again, controllers we, we'll already looked at. So the user interface. So as we did earlier, we have actually got another theme we downloaded now. So if I switch to this, uh, when it first does it, nothing happens. But if you hit escape to go back, it will then reload. And so you'll see the, in the top corner, the uh, scraping still happens. But now we're in a different different theme. So the main menu stays the same. Obviously the colour and, and stuff and the font has probably changed, but the actual, actual interface has changed. So as you can see this is a much nicer interface, much more flashy. Um, run, runs okay in the, in the virtual machine. Obviously it'll look a lot better on, on your machine. Um, you see like the you know the logo the, the system logos on the right hand side are, are animated slightly that bounce up and down. The background artwork is just moving and in the bottom left you get the kind of preview um, video snap of the different systems. So yeah, it's quite a nice quite a nice theme this. And obviously at the moment we're adding some games for Mega Drive. Obviously elsewhere in the world it was known as Genesis. So this logo has that Genesis there. But you could go and change that if you want to see it's just a, 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 an artwork file you can change. Anyway, yeah, so that's that's changing the theme, so it just changes the whole look and feel of the whole thing. Um, uh, what else is there? There's, like I said, I don't want to go into much the in-depth, like sort of advanced features. Um, but if you go back to where we were, go back to the theme set. Then once you have chosen a theme, if you want to, you can then go into the theme configuration and then customize the theme itself. So some of them have different views, like different color set, different icon set. There's, you know. Whole bunch of options you can you can change, but well, see that's uh, personal preference. Um, screen saver settings. So again, if you if you leave it unattended, whether it'll just dim the screen, go to black, play a random video. So play one of the video snaps that you got downloaded. Another good one. Slideshow pictures. So some of the fan work 
fan, fan art or screenshots, that kind of stuff, it'll just scroll through those. Um, or, or suspend the machine. I tend to leave it on dim. Um, yeah, transition between different lists and the, when the game launches, what transition happens, where you, it fades in or out, or the game slides across the screen, or yeah. <laughs> Whether you choose to show the clock in the bottom right hand corner, you turn that on and off. Uh, most stuff doesn't actually, you see the clock still there, it doesn't really take effect until you actually exit out of the menu. Yeah, and then, like I say, a whole bunch of uh, advanced options. And there you go, the clock's gone now. Uh, game collection. Oh, can't go into there while it's scraping. Fair enough. Um, network stuff update. I think most of it we would cover now. System settings, like I say, we were here er earlier to uh, change the region, but there's other stuff about changing the the look of the clock, whether it's 24 or 48 hour. Um, the information one's quite handy. Just gives the information about your system, how much disk space you've got left. Um, how your disk is formatted. You can see here we're on the x86 64 platform, but if you're on Pi, that would be different. So, amount of RAM. I mean, this is a virtual machine I built to, to run this, 2 gig of RAM. Um, yeah, all about the processor, number of CPUs, and then the, uh, the video card. Obviously, it's a virtual, virtual video card I'm running here. Um, come out there. Like I said, there's, there's things about power saving mode. You can change that. Uh, Texas Beach. Like I said, there's a whole bunch of stuff in there. Cody settings in there. Um, the hardware settings. Hopefully, you won't need to play play with. But if you've got a graphics card that's got multiple video outputs, you might need to set it to the right output. Um, again, for audio as well. If you've got multiple um, sound cards in your system, you might need to pick the right one there. Um, hopefully, auto will work for you. There's around, you know, changing the screen rotation. Um, overclock, I think, is more uh, specific to Raspberry Pi and the single board computers, so you can uh, push them overclock them a bit if you need to. Um, uh, storage device, so this is if you can, if you've got more than one um, one storage device, you can you can keep the games and stuff on a different a different hard drive. Um, backup user data is an option to uh, basically back up. Once you've got it up and running, configured it, done some tweaking, artwork, all that kind of stuff, you can use this to back up your data so if you do need to start again you can basically restore from there um, this is the option I mentioned earlier if you if you wanted to basically put this onto a dedicated machine and you want to put it onto the internal hard drive of the machine like I say you could open that machine up take that drive out plug it into your Windows machine temporarily and put the image onto it and then obviously shut down take it back out put it back into the new machine and, and fire up and away you go obviously that involves taking it apart Got the potential of damaging something or losing something, <laughs> but but the easy way to do it is is use this option here. So, like I say, just um, have a USB stick temporarily, put Batasera on it, boot that machine up from the US USB, and then you can click here, install a new disk, um, and then you, you'll have the target. Um, I did add, add a second disk into this virtual machine, the 64 gig drive, so you can, I can pick that as a target, and then it says, okay, what's that going to be? And when it says target architecture, that's whether it's you know a different device, uh, you know, a Raspberry Pi, or whatever. But obviously, this is a PC we're doing. And then you got, are you sure? Yes or no? And then you click install, and it will basically then. This requires a an internet connection because it doesn't just you know copy what's on USB drive to it. It downloads the image from the uh, Batasera website. So your your USB stick that you're running from needs enough space to download that image. And I think it's what between four or six gig in size. So you, you need, you know, you need a system with enough space on to download that onto the USB drive. Once it's downloaded it, it will then install it or copy it across. Well, basically what we did Netcher, write that image to the internal hard drive. And then like I say, once that's done, you can then power this down, take out the USB drive, turn it on, and you'll then you'll have Batasera boot up on your internal storage. And away you go, you've, got, you've then got your dedicated machine, it's got Batasera installed, it's always going to boot off the internal hard drive and, and, and you're good to go. So yeah, this option is quite handy. If you, did, you, should, you, know, you don't want to go through the whole palaver of taking a drive out, plugging it in the machine, imaging it, plugging it back in again. So um, Some security features here, so you can yeah, enforce security, so you can 
um, and a password that network share because I don't know if you notice when I browse that network share to put the ROMs on there's no password prompt it just let me in you also you can turn one on and, and change a change a password etc for that and then there are developer options which hopefully you shouldn't need to tweak things like the VRAM limit might be again you might want to do on a Raspberry Pi um, turning VSync on and off uh, depending on the power machine you might want to turn that on or off I think overscan I think is probably more related to the Pi as well to get the full screen um, so the the, um, the web access is interesting so if you turn that on you can basically go to a browser on your home network type in the IP address or the name Batsira or the host name that you've given your machine and colon 1234 which is the port and it basically gives you a nice little web interface shows you all the games you've got um, and you can actually click use that interface to start a game so potentially you could use your your your, heart, your, your mobile phone or tablet or something to browse through the game to click start and it will start on your Batasira machine um, you can also use it to control it and, and stop a game so if, it, if it's running a game let's okay fingers crossed it won't but if, if the game has, has hung or crashed or something and you can't get it to exit out you know, the keypad's unresponsive or whatever or gamepad's unresponsive you can use this web interface to go in and say and there's an option there to stop the running emulator or stop the whole system itself you can just click that and it'll close it down for you so yeah that web interface is quite handy um, it's quite good for using it as well you can scroll through the games you got and pick a game um, a lot of these other stuff um, you probably won't need there are things around formatting drives and cleaning out um, game list and and um, removed media so if you've if you've put a whole bunch of games on you've scraped all the media for them it's created a game list for them but then you've had a bit of a sort out and you've taken some off obviously all those media that media images that you've downloaded and video snaps are still going to be there taking up space so use this option and it'll do a clean up but basically delete any images that are no longer used or reference but we're not going to do that now um yeah clear caches, build image caches, so that, um, that um, option I just mentioned about downloading an image and writing it onto a hard drive, this option here will just clean out anything you downloaded to free up some uh, some space. But yeah, there's a whole bunch of advanced stuff here that I don't really use, don't need to use, most people really won't. But yeah. A whole bunch of advanced options if you really feel like tweaking <laughs> and messing around, but yeah, I don't tend to do that. I did. I think these options I did turn on at some point, just try and speed it up. Um, so as the system starts up, it, it will preload um, some of the metadata and, and some of the user interface stuff. Um, so basically, it preloads stuff. So when you first start the machine system and start browsing for your game list, there's no sort of delay. As it reads them, it's going to cache them into memory. So, obviously, like it says there, they will, both these features will increase boot time slightly because it will do it at boot time, but it's it's not it's, it's not noticeable. So, that may be one to turn on. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, like I say, there are a whole bunch of options in here, but most people shouldn't need to touch them. It's just a case of setting up the network, setting up your controller, adding your games, and then if you want to, scrape the artwork. And, uh, and away you go. And like I say, just on the the other thing was the the bezels. Now we've got some systems in there. Oh, sorry, not themes, bezels. I can actually go and grab the Mega Drive one, install that. And again, that's now in the download queue. So what I'll do, I'll, do, I'll let that finish. Let's go out to Genesis at the moment. If you, even if you for the games here, look a lot nicer. You see that one, it, it started to sc scrape already. That's obviously finished, Castle of Illusions. Um, so you can see you've got, on the left hand side, you've in the middle of the screen you've got, got the video snap playing. At the bottom you've got the name, the information about it. The little the bo 2D box art that we talked about. In the right hand side, you see they've got the four stars. So this has got a four out of five rating. You can just see there's a, another star that's not lit up there. And then obviously the release date, number of players, and the genre, and developer. So you, you, know, you get a lot of lot of uh, extra info, which is which is nice. Um, I think you remember on, on the basic interface, it was just a grid of games. 
you've now got this much nicer looking interface scrolling for the different games. And see screen 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 scrape has matched all these games so far. And, you know, it's got everything, it's got all the rating, it's got the 2D box art, it's got the, the video snap, it's got the logo on the wheel there, so yeah, what I'll do is I'll just let the the scraping finish and the uh, and those bezels download. Um, and then what I'll do once the bezels is finished, we'll maybe start Aladdin again, and hopefully you'll see a bezel for Aladdin. So I'm just going to pause here and be back when these uh, these downloads in the top there have finished. Right, I've left that going for a little while now. The download, but. For whatever reason, it's taken a while. I think my internet's probably uh, <laughs> taking a hammering at the moment. So, what I do, I just uh, it's going to download a few games now. Oh, sorry, scraped a few games now. So, went to Genesis. Yeah, you see. See all the artwork and stuff. Is so uh, some of the logos on the right hand side aren't done, but a lot of the background stuff's done. So, like I say, what I do. So we go back to Aladdin that we did before. Oh, too far. Yeah, sorry, just back to Aladdin. I was gonna do the bezels, but maybe I'm doing aim it, sorry. So like I said, I just want to try and get the bezels working and show those. So, um, and decoration set. <clears throat> You can see all the different ones I've got here. So the bezel project I want to use. Just come back out of here. Now we should be good to go. Back to Aladdin. I think what it might be is that I'm running at four by three already and the bezels also only tend to show up if you're doing like a 16 by 9 mm. let me turn 20 okay that's right it's fine so let's try this again <clears throat> there we go. It's gone off screen a little bit. Let me just drag this in. Hopefully you can see it. It's a little bit big for the uh, <laughs> my recording window. But you can see it kind of. Now I'm running in in you know, sort of a HD widescreen format. It's now running the <clears throat> the game in four by three, and then obviously the the, the artwork, the the bezels. Are basically filling the edge of the screen to basically fill the 16 by 9 if that makes sense um so yeah that's what the bezel look like like I say the bezel project really good there's a whole bunch of bezels for different systems and games i think they're, they're trying to get as many bezels as possible from that many games so you can see you've got uh, an adding bezel here which is really good um but yeah i just wanted to show you that because it, i think it just adds to the whole experience um like i say it's got the obviously the artwork, but also the sort of the TV border here to make it look like you can on a on the on screen, and then you can then go one step further and add, like I say, the effects of scan lines on here as well. Which is, I guess, a bit of a more of an advanced feature. Um, so you go back to menu. Uh, 
uh, aspiration and uh, we've got Renan and Shaden. So, because <clears throat> the whole, whole bunch of different shadings that you can apply, so obviously the payment, but scan lines is a fairly obvious one. Um, we yeah, actually all about games, it depends on the, the um, power of your hardware. Obviously it takes a bit more CPU to smooth out games and um, to add shaders and all that kind of stuff. So and, and scaling, this is um, improving the image quality. Um, so I'll just put scan lines up a minute and we'll just try that to see how well that runs. So you can see the, uh, <coughs> see the difference. It's a little bit big again. Even on that high resolution. I hope you can see there in a bit. You can kind of see the scan lines now on the screen. So I basically trying to make it look a bit like an old CRT screen, which I think it does, works quite well. Load a few more screens to see that a bit better. But yeah, hopefully you can kind of see that on the screen. So let's get through to the main menu. Yeah, so there you go. That, that's the, uh, the scan line shader added. So, yeah, you can play around. There's a whole bunch of different ones that kind of change this. Some of them make the screen kind of around it, so you get around the edges to make it look like it's on a, on a screen even more. And add some from reflection effects over the top as well to make you know, the show the glass. So, yeah, you can have a play around and make it find one you like. Obviously, this isn't. Perfect. I'm running on a virtual machine and on top of my machine, so we don't get quite the effect. But <coughs> yeah, that's it. Um, hopefully, that was useful to people. That's kind of a quick intro to Bastion and how to get it installed and then do a couple of bits, you know, like um, add, you know, add your game, basically get up and running. That's pretty much what you need. Yeah. Um, and then changing the theme, if you want to change it back, like I said, we should go back to that user interface, the screen, carbon. The default one, just in case you get you, know, you load one you don't like. And again, it can depend on your hardware. If you've got a, a very old PC or a, a slightly slower PC, please stick with this default one. Because again, there's, there's other things that make a bit of, a, a bit of extra CPU power to run. Um, but yeah, so um, you basically from here just add, add all your extra systems, add them, add them as you want, and, and away you go. So. Yeah, hopefully that was useful. Um, hopefully I didn't ramble too much. <laughs> I'm able to follow it. Okay, any questions? Obviously, just stick them in the stick them in those comments. I have now got a, a Facebook group to kind of go with this this channel. So I think it's just, it's just an easy place for people to chat, and ask questions, and that kind of stuff. So I can share information on my on my videos. So yeah, um, I'll again have the link in the description for that. Please feel free to join the group and have a chat and say hello. Um, ask any questions. Obviously about the videos I've put here, but any sort of general tech questions is the idea. Um, there's a lot of stuff at the moment around sort of retro gaming, that's kind of a bit of my passion, so um, I've done some bits and pieces on that already, but um, I've also done some PC tips and tricks and that kind of stuff in there, so yeah, check it out, have a look, obviously, um, really helpful if you, you know, like and subscribe to the channel and try and build it up as much as I can, uh, the idea is obviously to try and get as many videos done as possible, to cover all the different, you know, initially on retro gaming, all the various front ends and emulators that that we've got, obviously this is, this is back to the here, I've done stuff on uh, Retrex on, on Android, that's an Android specific front end and um, emulators all in one, which is similar to back to here, you, you install it and you just click back and drop the game in, and away you go, and it's a big So yeah, and I wanted to add other systems, like uh, RetroArch I've done, some guys on as well, and so a lot of things like RetroBat and um, uh, LaunchBot, Retro Pi, um, Coinops collection, Coinops builds. I've done a couple on those as well. So I'm trying to cover everything. Um, I've done a, a bit on um, emulation and different, different spec machines as well. Um, and at one point, I'm hoping to do a video um, to kind of help people get you know, just starting on, on retro gaming and emulation and basically do a from the ground up introduction. This is what, this is kind of you know, what it is, what, what it's all about, how you get started, what different things mean and you know, um, try to help people understand how everything works and get them get them started. So yeah, look out for that. That should be, I will be doing that hopefully quite soon. It might be quite a lengthy video. I might either break it down into smaller videos or you know, just do one big video that's 
you know, break it down into post chapters you can skip through. But yeah, anyway, so hope you found it enjoyable. Um, enjoyable. Hope you found it. Hope you enjoyed it and it was useful. Um, so yeah, please like and um, please subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye. Thank you.